Final speaker for today is Marissa Considine. Marissa is a double major in the philosophy department and the theater department, which is a quite unique combination. Like we have two students that are pursuing theater and philosophy. And she is going to present a paper entitled The Hidden Value of Nietzsche's Works on Women. So today I'm going to be talking about the hidden value of Nietzsche's works on women. Uh, so those, for those of you who might not know who Nietzsche was, uh, Nietzsche was a philosopher who lived from 1844 to 1888. Um, he is pretty influential in a lot of different subject areas because he talked about a lot of different subject areas from uh, theater to history um, to uh, moral subjectivity. He was more inclined to that than moral objectivity. Um, and even women, uh, which I'll be talking about today. So uh, just a few quotes by Nietzsche on women just to sort of get an idea of what kind of, uh, of a man he was when it came to his opinion of women. Um, in Zarathustra he said, the happiness of man is I will, the happiness of woman is he wills. Um, the fight for equal rights is actually a symptom of a disease. Woman, the more she is a woman, resists, resists rights in general hand and foot. And finally, uh, woman wants to become self-reliant, and for that reason she's beginning to enlighten men about women as such. This is one of the worst developments of the general uglification of Europe. Um, so the question uh, that I gave to myself is, given that Nietzsche's works on women are often misogynistic, do his works have value? And how can one sort of navigate through all of this misogyny to find value in even the most misogynistic portions of his writing? Uh, before I really get into this question, I think I'm going to have to discuss some influence. So Nietzsche lived during a time period in which women did not have the rights and the education that they have now. And of course, this is going to change how he sees the women around him. Uh, as for Nietzsche's family and social life, Nietzsche's father died at a pretty young age, and he was raised in a household that was primarily women. He also had female friends, uh, and although he never married or dated anyone really, um, he did have you know, some knowledge of, uh, of women around him and what they might be thinking. And finally, Schopenhauer. Um, Schopenhauer was a huge influence for Nietzsche. Um, he was uh, an inspiration. He was the man who Nietzsche considered to be one of his teachers, at least young Nietzsche, uh, for a while. Um, the thing about Schopenhauer is Schopenhauer did write an essay called On Women, which is considered to be uh, an example of one of the most uh, misogynistic pieces of <laughs> philosophical writing from that time period. So, uh, of course, Nietzsche likely read this and was influenced by it, as he was influenced by a lot of his philosophy. Uh, I broke my argument down into two categories, the non-misogynistic works and the misogynistic works. So the non-misogynistic works uh, support women's issues. Uh, don't treat women as the lesser gender. Don't really bring in Nietzsche's other uh, less good ideas about how women are. Um, and these works usually focus on how society and morality treat women rather than on how women are or should be. It's more of a, this is how I observe uh, society treating women rather than this is how I personally feel about women. Um, on the other hand, the misogynistic clearly treat women as lesser, uh, often advocate for women to be treated as lesser and to be treated as property and tend to be very demeaning towards women, their intelligence, uh, and how they act in general. Um, so, first of all, uh, finding value in non-misogynistic works I found to be a far easier task than finding value in the misogynistic works. Uh, so the question here was, if Nietzsche holds these flawed misogynistic ideas, uh, should even his non-misogynistic works be rejected? After all, he obviously doesn't have the best opinion of women and he obviously doesn't uh, fully understand them. Um, so I sort of concluded that no, despite the flaws of their creator, these non-misogynistic works have value and contribute to the conversation on women and women's rights without Nietzsche's lesser opinions getting in the way, since they contribute, they add discussion, 
Um, I felt that they do have value despite the creator's flaws. Uh, on the other hand, finding value in misogynistic works was a little more difficult. Uh, so I tried to navigate this problem first by uh, finding examples of Nietzsche's work in which he's ma he makes a valuable point. However, this point requires misogyny in some way. Although the conclusion or the main point of this work might be valuable, without the misogyny uh, that contained in the premises backing up that point, Nietzsche would not have come to that uh, conclusion or he would have had a harder time explaining it. So um, an example of this is Beyond Good and Evil, Aphorism 239. Um, in the text, uh, Nietzsche basically states, equal rights are bad for women, it's bad for Europe, just a terrible idea, and women are completely mistaken if they ever want to, uh, to get equal rights, specifically after a while, because um, equal rights will mean equal education. A woman will achieve a general education, and this is bad because education weakens wills for both men and women. And finally, at the end of this, he explains that his entire rant was because a woman's power comes directly from her will. Uh, all women who, who sort of come into power uh, do it through their will rather than, say, physical strength. Um, so why is this valuable? Uh, it contributes to the discussion on women uh, and women's powers. Uh, in, so it's valuable despite its misogyny because his discussion on where women's natural power comes contributes to the discussion. Uh, on what power is, where it can be found, how a woman's perceived power might differ from that of a man, uh, even though uh, he takes a lot of misogynistic claims to finally get there. Um, these misogynistic ideas make his, his, uh, his ideas on women's natural power stronger, um, and his discussion on uh, equal rights and how terrible they will be for women is actually kind of important to his final point. Um, as for uh, a second reason uh, I found is because sometimes Nietzsche's writing and he is so misogynistic that he accidentally comes full circle back around um, and actually makes a good point about society uh, that would go unnoticed otherwise. The specific one I found this in was in Beyond Good and Evil, Aphorism 238. In this one, Nietzsche attempts to make a fantastic point about um, how women should be treated as property uh, just like the Orientals treat their women as property. And this will fix problems with, uh, with gender uh, in, uh, in like the household and society. During this argument, he brings up uh, two types of men, feminist men who want equality for women and misogynistic men who treat women as property. Uh, for these misogynistic men, he says that they are these deep people, they're going to succeed in life, um, everything's going to go well for them, they're just fantastic men, and feminist men are weak, they are the lesser men, they are shallow, and they're never really going to succeed. Um, this passage has value because Nietzsche has accidentally pointed to an issue in the way society views men who uh, treat women as their equals. If society sees men uh, who want to uh, have women as their equals uh, as lesser than the men who want to treat women as property, then men will be encouraged to uh, treat women as property so that they are perceived as uh, better, the deeper men, instead of the lesser, weaker, feminist, equality-wanting men. Um, this is valuable because there is a possibility that this issue may have been ignored or gone undiscovered otherwise, if not pointed out but accidentally by Nietzsche here. Um, another way uh, to find value in misogynistic works are um, for works specifically that discuss a woman's place. Uh, these become valuable when viewed in the larger context of Nietzsche's philosophy. Uh, why is this? Nietzsche has this idea that men and women have distinct roles within society, um, that they're determined by their natural instincts. Women are subservient to man because it's sort of in a woman's nature to be subservient to man and to be the perfect slave. 
Um, but in context with the whole of his ideas, he comes into a bit of a problem because he actually makes contradictory statements on women, although sometimes he says they have these distinct roles and it's because of their nature. At other points he says that um, women uh, lack these feminine qualities. There are some women who have masculine qualities instead. And uh, this is a problem because you see Nietzsche thinks that uh, morality and virtue are very subjective. And um, moralities should not be statements of thou shalt not. So for Nietzsche to tell women who have these masculine virtues, uh, thou shalt not act on those masculine virtues, thou shalt uh, go home and stay in the kitchen, uh, would be to go against Nietzsche's own ideas that you should do what's best for your nature in order to achieve what's best for you in life. So this sort of reveals the irrationality of this world view um, and inadvertently advocates for treating women as individuals instead of generalizing the behavior of an entire group of people by saying that they're all dumb and they should all stay home. Uh, finally, um, historical value. So how are they historically valuable? Uh, well, other than they are being historical texts, uh, it provides an example of how men at the time of his writing perceived and treated women. Uh, this actually legitimizes works by women at the time by describing things from the alternative perspective. For instance, if you have a, a feminist writer at the time who's saying stuff like, men do not respect me, I really wish that men would stop treating me as lesser and let me go outside of the house. Um, it's almost not enough just to have that writing, especially since today there's a tendency to forget the past. We forget the problems that existed then. So the fact that Nietzsche's actually a man going, yes, I think that women are lesser. Yes, I think that they should not have rights, sometimes, um, means that uh, those works by women are sort of shown to be more true than if uh, it was just those writings alone. Um, in conclusion, Nietzsche had a lot of ideas about women, some reasonable, some awful, some wrong or misguided. However, Nietzsche's works on women should not be thrown out or ignored. Uh, can they be challenged, debated, and discussed? Of course. As long as these works can be useful to people today to challenge one's ideas, incite debate and discussion, point to injustice, and give historical context to issues that still exist within current day society, they remain valuable. Thank you.